Well, first of all, I'd like to see him actually do some some work. I mean, everybody's sitting around We're talking. Probably waiting nice for the choppers were... to leave. I, I guess so, but you you know, a route, anything, anything, a snap, something would would be good. Uh, I I understand the intrigue, and, and when you when you get someone like Tom Brady to to an organization that's been struggling and and struggling for a while, there's there's incredible optimism, and and it's a little bit of of the reverse of what's happening in, in New England where there's a lot of concern about, about what's going to happen. And, and uh, the thing that, that I'm a little concerned about is with these events taking place, they're taking place all over the country. Wouldn't it be better if these guys were actually at the facility where there were doctors and testing and, and things where, where they could do this in a way that that's uh, a, a little bit safer so, so um, here's here, – go ahead, Wilds. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Nick. No, 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 you go. Oh, so here's the – set the, the, the testing part aside, I think, is an interesting point and a good one by Coach. But I just think the team facilities league hasn't opened them up yet in that regard. But as far as the intrigue or the hype, I, the, here's where I want to give Brady a compliment. I think he is more well-equipped to deal with that than any player in the league and maybe any player ever. I, I do understand the idea, Wilds, that, well, you know, now all of a sudden a team in Tampa that's been really out of the national eye for the better part of nearly 20 years that doesn't have any sustained long-term success in the history of their franchise, they're going to be on national TV as much as anybody, they're going to be talked about as much as anybody, and all this, and it's all because of one player addition so all that pressure weighing on that player's shoulders. But Tom Brady, for the last 15 years of his career, has operated from a place very few players in sports history have, which is, if I finish second, this year was a failure, where it, it, every single year you had realistic Super Bowl expectations, realistic Super Bowl aspirations, and so I think that, you know, the scrutiny and the media and all of this that for a lot of guys could maybe affect them. Wilds, I don't see any way it affects Tom, even though he's out of New England, because he's been operating from that place for as long as he's been Tom Brady almost. Yeah, so I wonder if it affects everybody else on the field, though, Nick. Like, look, I've worked in sports media for 20 years. I do not remember a helicopter shot of just a guy, a bunch of guys hanging out in the history of sports. I really don't. This is an unprecedented appetite for Tom Brady footage, I guess. Um, it's, it's, it's just odd to see this footage. And I like it because remember we tried to get those photos the other days and the Tampa Bay newspaper had it and we couldn't get them. So I recognize that we're part of the system that wants to see Tom Brady. But Looking at this and recognizing that there's such a ravenous appetite for Tom Brady on the field and seeing Gronk on the field makes me think that this is a, a higher pressure cooker coach than I think I originally thought. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is, is necessarily a higher pressure cooker for for Tom at all. It, this is this is what what Tampa Bay wanted when they brought Tom Brady in is the impact that he could have with the players around him. And, and yeah. uh, I know Kevin, you love the, the term force multiplier. This is, this yes. is where he's the greatest force multiplier is when he can be on the field and, and the, um, as he's learning, the guys can learn from him in terms of his approach, in terms of his professionalism, in terms of the, the nuances of, of, of route running, of, of understanding coverages. There's so many things that that he can teach, and and the best way that he can teach is obviously not over Zoom. It's it's with the guys, with the in the huddle, and and um, th those those lessons. Well, coach, if I may, can I just throw something a question back to you quickly? Because he, I, I know Tom can teach them a lot, but I feel like there's an element, and tell me if I'm wrong of being in the crucible, like the scrutiny the Bucks are going to be under is mm -hmm. so different than anything. Take Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They played, I would imagine, with almost the security of knowing, man, if we lose, folks are not, not going to blame us. They're going to blame Jameis. 
because Jameis probably threw it to the other team and and yep. people understand his weaknesses. And by the way, outside of Tampa, no one's really going to be talking about us. So I like how how different or difficult do you think that's going to be for all the guys on Tampa aside from Gronk and Brady who this is all so new to, coach? It's it's incredibly difficult and it's the problem that that Cleveland went through last year when you insert significant expectations to a season and ever everything changes the way that people play you change the way that that you're um you're perceived uh just externally and 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 the pressure that guys often put on themselves because of those expectations it's it's often counterproductive and and not not um a, an asset at all and as as much as people want to be recognized and and want to um, be respected, oftentimes they can't handle with the the pressure that comes with those expectations. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.